Welcome to the McNeese White Collar Defense and Internal Investigations podcast series. In this video podcast, attorney Sarah Heiser Staub discusses the ethical obligations of Pennsylvania's public officials. Ms. Heiser Staub practices in the White Collar Defense and Internal Investigations, Litigation, Energy and Environmental, and Automotive Dealership Groups at McNeese. The Pennsylvania Public Official and Employee Ethics Act has been in effect since 1979 and must be carefully followed by state and local officials and employees. Mainly, the act requires that public officials file annual statements disclosing their financial interests, but it also prohibits activities that have been deemed a violation of the public's trust. The act is enforced by the State Ethics Commission, which is comprised of seven politically appointed commissioners assisted by a staff of investigators and prosecutors. Repercussions for violating the act include administrative penalties, civil fines and restitution, and sometimes criminal prosecution. The act's conflict of interest provision is particularly problematic. That provision prohibits public officials or employees from engaging in conduct that constitutes a conflict of interest. Section 1102 of the act defines conflict of interest as use by a public official or public employee of the authority of his office or employment or any confidential information received through his holding public office or employment for the private pecuniary benefit of himself, a member of his immediate family, or a business with which he or a member of his immediate family is associated. If criminal prosecution is pursued, violation of this provision constitutes a felony, punishable by up to $10,000 in fines and up to five years in prison. Prosecutors and courts have applied this provision broadly, resulting in a handful of challenges to its constitutionality. In 2016, the Pennsylvania Supreme Court took a closer look at the provision in the case of Commonwealth versus Vion. Mike Vion is a former state representative from Beaver County who founded a nonprofit organization known as the Beaver Initiative for Growth, or BIG. BIG received nearly all of its funding from public sources, including grants from the Pennsylvania Department of Community and Economic Development, or DCED. Vion received a budget of $20,000 per year from the House of Representatives to cover the cost of rent at his constituent offices. Although representatives could request an increase in that budget, few rarely did because the request might be viewed unfavorably as a gratuitous expense of taxpayer money. Public opinion generally supports representatives who operate their district offices at or below their budgeted allowance. To stay on budget while providing larger and presumably more convenient constituent offices, Vion co-located his constituent offices with his charity, Big. Big paid about half of the rent, but occupied considerably less space than the representatives' offices. This allowed Vion to stay at or below his annual rent allowance. Vion's activities were investigated and he was charged with various crimes, including theft of services, theft by deception, conspiracy, and conflict of interest. Although Vion was never alleged to have taken any funds for his personal use, the trial court instructed the jury that it could find that Vion had gained a private pecuniary benefit if he had received an intangible political gain through his activities. The jury found that he had received such an intangible gain in the form of positive political capital and convicted Vion of conflict of interest, among other crimes. The court sentenced Vion to a prison term of 12 to 48 months and ordered him to pay over $130,000 in restitution to DCED. Vion appealed, and the case reached the Pennsylvania Supreme Court. In November 2016, the Supreme Court vacated Vion's conviction and sentence, finding that the trial court's instruction regarding the intangible political gain impermissibly broadened the conflict of interest provision. The Supreme Court referred to this as a criminalization of politics. The court determined that, to violate the conflict of interest provision, a public official's conduct must produce a quantifiable monetary or financial gain. While that may sound simple enough, a few problematic aspects of the conflict of interest standard were left standing after this decision. For example, courts have found that an official can be the recipient of a pecuniary gain even if he or she does not keep that gain. In Keller v. State Ethics Commission, a borough mayor was convicted of conflict of interest for soliciting funds for performing weddings, even though he donated all of those funds, which were approximately $16,000, to charity. The Vion decision left this precedent intact. 
The pecuniary gain need not necessarily be monetary, as long as it's something to which a monetary value can be assigned. In one case, a township police officer was convicted of bribery based on the receipt of sexual favors from prostitutes valued between $30 to $50. The pecuniary gain need not necessarily accrue to the public official. The statute criminalizes any gain realized by the official or his or her immediate family. This includes spouses, siblings, parents, and children. And finally, abstaining from an official vote may not be sufficient to avoid prosecution. The investigative division of the State Ethics Commission has taken the position that any involvement with a contract that benefits the public official or a family member is sufficient to invite prosecution under the Act. In addition to potential prison time, a public official may be ordered to repay three times the financial gain in restitution to the state. If you are a public official and you are concerned that a potential transaction may run afoul of the conflict of interest provision or any other provision of the Ethics Act, you can seek an advisory opinion from the Ethics Commission. This opinion is considered a complete defense against any prosecution by the Ethics Commission and evidence of good faith in any other civil or criminal proceeding. However, it is important to seek an opinion from the Ethics Commission directly. Reliance on the advice of private counsel or even the solicitor of your political subdivision is not likely to hold the same weight. In other words, public officials must be keenly aware of the Ethics Act and its consequences and must tread carefully if any of their private activities cross paths with their official duties. For more information on the topic, please see the information on the following screen.